I always knew I was going to be an artist. From a very early age, um, I just was fascinated by nature, and that was one of my great loves. I used to spend hours and hours in my house taking things apart and just studying them. If it was a flower, I would like look at it for hours and just draw it. Yeah, I was a strange kid. I was definitely interested in nature more than children and playing. I came from a very creative family. Um, my mother was a painter, and she definitely influenced me over the years. And um, she encouraged me, and when I was very young, she actually took me to my first art class. And I drew this picture of a tree, and she wound up hanging it in the house. So this is the painting my mom did, and um, my mom had no um, formal training and she didn't really know how to draw, but all her paintings were imbued with um, so much feeling. My father was actually a businessman, but he was a very um, interesting man in a lot of ways. He um, played the violin, and on the weekends, my family would get together. My brother was a violinist and an artist. His brother would come to visit also, and um, he played the piano and taught at Music and Art in Manhattan. And every um, weekend they would come and just play music. So my house was filled with music all the time, which was so great. I was very shy as a child. I just remember spending so many hours and hours, you know, hiking and looking at birds, and, and that was my love of just um, fascination of nature. Um, nature gave me that joy or just being by the water and listening to the waves um, was what gave me the most pleasure. You know, I didn't start out painting. I actually um, worked for somebody who was a um, sign painter. And I did murals and trompe and um, I learned wood graining and so many different things that I brought into my artwork as I got older. And then I actually um, started doing stained glass and had a stained glass business and restored churches and got involved in that. And then there was a period that I was an etcher and did lots of etchings. This actually was a template for one of the first stained glass pieces I ever did. And um, I had never done a piece so big. I was doing small pieces at that time. It was a commission piece and the man gave me a certain amount of money each week. And I put the money in the bank and I was gonna give it back to him if I couldn't do the piece, if it wouldn't work. And I didn't know how to reinforce it because the whole outside was beveled glass and he was sitting on 250 crystals and prisms. And so I um, found somebody out in California and they taught me how to reinforce it. This is actually the drawing for the stained glass piece. When I came to New Mexico, I moved here in 91 and I started painting Native American children. 
I was fortunate to meet this woman who was Kiowa, and she was on the uh, committee for the children's um, powwow. And she let me take photographs of all these children, and I wound up doing lots of um, Native American children. And then um, I switched to painting um, wildlife and um, been doing that for all these years. I actually went to school to be an um, art teacher and never really wanted to do that. I just painted and that was my love. I wanted to really perfect realism and um, so that's what I've been working on all these years. When I paint, I lose all track of time. I have no idea where I am, what day of the week it is. If somebody came into the room, I don't even think I'd notice them. To me, it's a, a deep meditation. And I've been doing um, Tai Chi for 15 years and Qigong. And I, for me, this is just an extension of that. I feel like the, the painting doesn't come from me, but sometimes I'll look at my work and I can't believe that I've done it. And I, I think how I wouldn't be able to do that again. And sometimes it's really difficult. I struggle and sometimes it just flows and comes really easily. This is the painting that I experimented with painting square by square. So I would put a square on the canvas, and then I'd have a square on, on my reference material, and I would um, paint just one little section at a time. And that way I could get the um, spots exactly where I wanted them, and it, it made it so that it was very realistic that way. This was the same process, and I've only done two, these two paintings like that, and this was done square by square also. They both took about six months to do. This is an anhinga, and it's a bird that I took a photograph of down in Florida. It's a very interesting bird because it doesn't have oil in its feathers and um, it sits on a log for a really long time and just preens and to dry off. And they call it a snake bird because it, um, when it's swimming in the water, its neck looks like a snake. So when I paint, I have to really learn about the habitat, I learn about the musculature, um, and just everything about the animal that I paint so I can really get to know it. Out of all the trees in the world, this one pinion tree found me. I um, was walking down my road and um, I just saw this pinion tree. And for some reason, it was calling to me to paint it. I started painting it and I was working on it for a couple weeks. And one evening, I was coming home late. A young girl had crashed a car and she was wedged between this um, pinion tree and a juniper tree. And she was drunk. She was very upset, she was crying. And I just held her in my arms and um, we sat there for a long time. She told me that she was going back to her boyfriend's house, which was down the road from me, to clean it up. She was away and she got very, very upset and she ran off and she ran out into the woods. I called um, search and rescue and they never showed up. I had called the police and they didn't show up. It was cold and she was wearing this little dress and I was really afraid for her. They sent the um, tribal police and they showed up and I asked the man to go look for her and he thought it was more important to move the car, which I thought was absurd. I finally went home about 11 o'clock at night and I got a call the next day and found out that she had killed herself. She was depressed and she would have done it at some point. So it really didn't have to do with the accident. 
She's been part of my life since then, and um, I'm in contact with her parents, and they just email me. And I actually put a cross down at the end of the road where the accident happened. And I feel like that tree brought me to her, and that I really helped her. This is a painting of a great egret, and to me it's very yin and yang. There's a lot of movement, and yet the bird is standing still. I feel the form of the bird forces a viewer to explore the whole painting. This one took a year to paint. It was um, very, very intricate, and just drawing it out took me a really long time to figure it out. This is a painting I did um, from um, when I went down to Bosque del Apache, which is below Albuquerque. And these are the sandhill cranes. And I chose to do them backlit. And I think that it's just more dramatic that way. And the birds, the way they're placed, remind me of musical notes.